Hey everyone, this lesson we'll be looking at a first-hand investigation testing the solubility of different compounds. So remember the solubility is the ability of a compound to dissolve in a solvent and in this case we'll be mostly looking at water. The aim today is to investigate the solubility of a range of substances in water and how we're going to do this is that we're going to have a fixed amount of water in a stoppered test tube. So we'll just say 5 mils. And then we can get a fixed amount of the substance we're looking at, uh, so a grain of rice size, and dissolve it in the 5 mils of water or 5 drops, whatever it is, make sure it's consistent. Add the substance to the water, put the stopper on, and shake the test tube for a set amount of time. And make sure you're consistent with all your, uh, all your substances. So if you're going to do 3 minutes in the first one, make sure you do 3 minutes in all of them. And then we can determine whether the, dis the substance will dissolve in water or not. So to test, we're going to look at some ionic compounds, and there's quite a few. So sodium chloride, copper sulfate, copper oxide, magnesium sulfate, potassium iodide, and nickel chloride. And then some molecular substances are sucrose, ethanol, glycerol, hexane, and iodine. And then we'll look at polymetric compounds. So poly means many. So it's going to be like a polymer, so plastic type things. So small pieces of polyethylene, PVC, PET, all of these are plastics. And cellulose, which is a sugar. Uh, covalent network substances. So remember, it's like a, a crystal structure of covalent bonds, not ionic bonds. So that's in silica and graphite. And we'll look at also... Uh, looking at if they're going to dissolve or not. So the picture shows that some things are going to dissolve, some things aren't going to dissolve. And what we re expect to see is that sodium chloride are soluble, so is copper sulfate, magnesium sulfate, potassium iodide, nickel chloride, sucrose. They're going to be all soluble substances, so they will dissolve fully in the water. As with ethanol, ethanol is a liquid, uh, when we add it to water, it's going to mix. So we're going to look at miscibility in this case. Glycerol is also another liquid, so the same case as with ethanol. Some of them are going to be partially soluble, so not fully like the other ones. And this includes iodine, uh, but some are insoluble. And that's going to be the copper oxide, but the copper 2 oxide. Hexane, polyethylene, PVC, PET, cellulose. Uh, all these are going to be insoluble, so they're going to form either a precipitate or they're just going to sink to the bottom and nothing's going to change. Uh, silica as well as graphite will be insoluble. Uh, so in this investigation, we're just looking at that ionic compounds tend to be soluble. Uh, diatomic uh, or non-polar ones are either partially soluble or insoluble, and especially large chain molecules are going to be insoluble. So we can look at some questions just to see how we're going. Uh, question 16 says, discuss uh, measures necessary to ensure the validity of your experimental design. So we need to have a control variable, so something that we're comparing to, so that we can see if there's any differences. The control variable, such as using the same volume of water uh, and, uh, and the same amount of each chemical being tested, uh, that's going to be something that we keep consistent. So if we change the volume of water, then it's going to change the amount of uh, the solubility of a certain compound. If we're going to increase the amount of the compound in different stages, then we're obviously changing things and we can't then compare between them. So we need to treat all the chemicals the same. So shake them the same, stir them the same, uh, shake them for the same amount of time. So next, question 17, explain a safety precaution necessary when carrying, carrying out this experiment. Uh, so when we're shaking to dissolve the substance, we need to make sure we don't point the test tube at anybody. So th if this happens, uh, if you accidentally let, let it go, it can fly into their face. Or uh, if the stopper comes out, the chemical can come out and hit them in the face. And this is really important because some of the things will be acid that you're testing and this can really um, burn your eyes. And iodine is toxic, so we don't want it to be anywhere near uh, our friends. We can also wear goggles to make sure we don't 
uh, affect our eyes because our eyes are the one of the most sensitive parts of our body and they won't heal. So we need to make sure we don't get any acid or any corrosive substances in there. So question 18, explain the terms in terms of intermolecular forces, uh, like dissolves like. So if you can remember back to the previous uh, lessons, what we were talking about, like dissolves like, uh, we're really talking about whether or not something will dissolve in another thing. So if they're polar, it will dissolve in polar, nonpolar dissolves in nonpolar. So solutes which have a similar uh, intermolecular forces are likely to interact with each other. So the solvent and the solute will interact if they have similar intermolecular forces. And that means it's more likely to dissolve. And finally, question 19, urea, which is the compound there written, is a polar molecular solid. And sodium nitrate is another one. Uh, these are two compounds used in soluble fertilizer mixture. Describe in what form these substances exist in aqueous solution. So this means we're going to dissolve it in water because it's an aqueous solution. Urea will exist as molecules surrounded by polar water molecules because usually um, covalent bonds can't be broken when they're being dissolved. So we can break up the whole crystal structure, uh, so separating molecules but not breaking up the molecules. Sodium nitrate will dissolve by dissociating into ions which will be surrounded by polar water molecules as well. Uh, in summary, what we did today is we looked at the different solubilities of different substances. So ionic compounds are polar molecules, nonpolar molecules are polymetric ones, so polymers, um, and looking at if they can dissolve in water or not and form aqueous solutions. Mostly ionic compounds will form aqueous solutions, but sometimes they don't. And large molecules such as polymers tend not to form any aqueous solutions because they're not able to dissolve in water.